okay, finally a success. We have Mike Winchell and Dad. We have Don Billingsley and Dad. Stories are presented right next to each other. We start with Mike's, we go to Don's. Let's just fill in some facts about these two boys. Let's fill in some facts about the story. So what facts do you remember from either story? Corinne, give me a fact that you remember from either story. Okay, so, um, well, not actually. And we're talking about this point in the story, the 1988 season. Sarah? Okay, so uh, Winchell's father was involved in his athletic training from an early age. Can you say that? Okay, so Winchell. I'm going to use Winchell to refer to the dad. I'm going to use Mike to refer to Mike. So Winchell involved in son's life. I love my smart boy. Okay, more. More facts. Billingsley <laughs> parties. A drinking problem that he has had since he was in high school, of course. David. Winchell dead. Um, Probably a host of other health issues, but uh, alcohol and alcohol abuse over many years is definitely involved. More facts. Aaron. Aaron, can you flesh that out a little bit for me? Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, Don after um, he was father to Charlie. So Charlie's a baby. Where's Don? Because Charlie lives his life how? What, is, what does Charlie do? What has he been doing over the years? And, and has trouble holding down a job, right? Okay, so he bounces away uh, around from job to job. The, the grown man, the father, is relatively infantile and immature and lives his life that way. So I like the, um, the quotation you brought out where it seems less like a father and more like a roommate, probably one who would be very accepting of Don's behavior. What does Don have a reputation for on the team? Drinking. He's the hardest drinker of the team. So that's definitely related. More facts. Uh, you faded off there at the end, Haven. What? Okay, so um, it, could we say that Mike has or had both parents, although now he has a strained relationship with mom, and you're correct, whereas Don is a product of separation. these two stories placed together. We're talking about juxtaposition as our device. He decides to tell these two stories in one chapter, and he doesn't do much else. He does develop some information about other games, as he will in every chapter, but every chapter has a primary focus. What was the chapter, what was the focus of chapter one? Primary focus of chapter one, what does Bissinger want to accomplish in that chapter? That's correct. History lesson on Odessa. Let's give the characterization of the town. 
What was the focus of chapter 2? How dedicated, or we could even say obsessed, the town is with football. Excellent. So we've got Odessa generally, then we've got Odessa specifically with football with this snapshot of the watermelon feed. So now he's thinking about dreaming of heroes. And he's deciding what he wants to do and what he wants to express. And obviously through this juxtaposition, he's deciding to give re relatively complex messages about these boys and their fathers. Because, of course, a relationship between a boy and a father, especially in the context of football, is vitally important. So he places Winchell and Billingsley next to each other. Why wouldn't he place Winchell next to Booby Miles and his dad? True, but we're looking for comparison and contrast, right? Why would placing Booby Miles and his father there confuse the issue or add some dimension to it that we don't need to discuss just yet? What's significantly different about Booby Miles from these two boys on the board? Uh, that's true, but he did play, so he was a member of the team. He does live with his uncle, um, but of course Mike Winchell lives with his mother and no longer lives with his father. So Booby has had a relationship with his father, albeit abu an abusive relationship. Booby's relationship with his father and with his uncle is heavily informed by race issues. And Bissinger decides that he wants to keep the race issue for a different chapter. He wants to focus on it primarily. He says race and racism is such an important force in Odessa, it deserves its own chapter. Take a look at the chapter titles. Take a look at the table of contents. Come on, open books. Tell me which chapter is he going to use to focus on ra race relations. Black and White, Chapter 5, thank you very much. Also, we get a heavy amount of it in chapters about Booby Miles, chapters like Booby. So, we take Booby out of the equation for the moment. Why? Because we don't want to be confused by race issues. We want to focus purely on fathers and sons. So, let's take two white boys from the team. Let's place them next to each other. And let's talk about race in a different chapter. So, we got Mike and Dad and Don and Dad placed next to each other. What conclusions can you draw about the relationships between fathers and sons? Sorry? They're the same? How are they the same? That's okay. Connor is starting us off with similarity. Great. Let's start off with similarity. So I'm going to use yellow here for similarity. Both fathers abuse alcohol. Connor, extend that further. What can you conclude about the life for a young teenage boy in Odessa from that comparison? That drinking's an issue, right? That drinking's a serious issue because who do you model your behavior on? You model behavior on your fathers. You model behavior on your fill in the blank. Title. Title. Your heroes. Thank you very much. And who is a boy's first hero? Dad. Boy's first hero is dad. The first representation of masculine strength in a boy's life is his father. And when everybody's father is using or abusing alcohol and they're dying from it, losing jobs because of it, you've got an issue. Now we understand a little bit more about this culture. Now we understand a little bit more about these boys. Why? Because these two compare. Good dad, and I think we could say that we like Mike. I'm sorry, um, we like Billy. Bad dad, Charlie seems to have some problems. Both of them have problems with abusing alcohol. Cool. Do you have any other comparisons or contrasts? There's a lot more to be said. Blue for the contrast. Um, Billy Winchell involved. Charlie Billingsley not. So what conclusion can you draw about the, the fathers and sons here in, um, in Odessa? Yeah. What conclusion can you draw about the fathers in Odessa?
But Billy is, right? Billy was involved in his son's life. Billy was helping him out. The message could be complex. Aaron, I think what you're looking for is you're looking for one message, whereas the message is something like um, uh, something of more of a gray area rather than black and white to give the um, play on the chapter title. But we're saying that the fathers are not all bad. Even though they're all having problems with alcohol, there are a hard drinking, beer swilling culture out there in the Texas Plains. Still, some of these fathers are good fathers. They're involved in their sons' lives, and they have every right to earn the distinction of hero. And some of them <laughs> are less mature than their sons. So we have a complex relationship going on here. And you're going to see Booby Miles' relationship, well, you may not read this chapter, we're probably going to skip around a bit, but you'll see Booby Miles' complex relationship with both L.B. Miles, who's an extraordinarily um, caring and involved father, even though he's an uncle, and his relationship with his own father, who was absent and was guilty of abuse. So we have a complex relationship about, or a complex message about fathers. What else can you draw? The juxtaposition should bear out some more compare or conclusion, or compare or contrast conclusions. So we know that dads are not all bad. We know that they probably all have a bit of a problem with drinking. It's part of this culture. These boys like their fathers. They're all like their fathers in some way, right? They're all modeling themselves off, off their fathers. So, by comparison here, sorry, I think it might be you. Father influence is vital and defining. These boys are defining themselves by their fathers. Who's absent in this chapter? Speak up. Mom. Mom's absent in this chapter. Could Bissinger have talked about their mothers in more detail? Why didn't he? Speak up, Hayden. Because they're not important enough in these boys' lives. Not as important. The fatherly influence is formative and defining. From training to athletics, from training to how to drink, <laughs> training to have, how to be responsible and how to be a man, either by positive or negative example, the fatherly influence is vital. These boys are both kind of trapped and defined by their fathers. And this relationship is important to understand what's going on. Hayden. It seems like mothers uh, could be either an absent um, figure in this story or at least a questionable one. Booby has no strong female role model, uh, no much to, to speak of there. L.V. Miles doesn't provide uh, a girlfriend or a wife or anybody else for Booby to look up to. Um, Winchell's got strained relationships with mom. Billingsley left his mom, and the other boys we never really think about all that much in terms of their relationship to their parents. So I think Bissinger's saying that the relationship with um, women and with mothers is problematic at best for these boys. Now whether or not he's accurate about that for all of Odessa, I don't know, that's another issue. But the problem is he's depicting a strange relationship with women. That's the function of the juxtaposition. So I told you that was one of the rhetorical devices. You would learn about it when you have a shining example. There is your shining example from Dreaming of Heroes. But these two stories next to each other determine a lot. 